Hey guys, my name is Pat Hamilton, and this is Hamilton Handmade. So I'm getting a little bit more into woodworking with hand tools, and decided that it was about time that I got a joiner's mallet. Now instead of purchasing one of these expensive joiner's mallets, I decided this would be a great first project for my YouTube channel. So today, I'll be showing you how to build a joiner's mallet. Now the first step is picking your lumber to build your mallet out of. For me, I looked around in my shop to see exactly what I already had in stock. A joiner's mallet is not that large, so you could use some, uh, some stock pieces or maybe some scraps that you have laying around. The big thing to note is that you want it to be a hardwood. I picked pecan, but that's because I have an abundance of pecan in my shop. So there are two major elements to a joiner's mallet. You're gonna have your head, which I'm gonna build it out of this piece of pecan right here, and then you have your handle. So these pieces will essentially join in just like this. Obviously, this is much larger. We're gonna work this down a little bit, but this will become our joiner's mallet. Pecan is a nice, heavy hardwood. Should be just perfect for what I need, and honestly, if it isn't, I've just ruined some scrap wood anyway. So you can use just about any hardwood that you have laying around in the shop. Many people use oak as it is so accessible, uh, but anything that you have, go ahead and give it a shot. Now to start off this project, I'm going to begin with the mallet head. Now for my sizing, I'm thinking about a length of four inches, a width of three inches, and a height of three inches. We're going to have to be extremely careful to keep as much lumber as possible and not waste any excess as I'm pretty close to size right here. We're gonna cut this on the table saw. That way we have a perfect pass. We make it square and we could go from there. I start out by setting the fence at about three and a quarter. This will give me a bit of excess so I can cut all the sides to square up the mallet head. My blade height is set about half of the width of the lumber. I cut and then flip to rip the full piece. This allows for a safer cut. Once two sides are square, I set my fence to three inches and rip the remaining two sides using the previous method. Now that we have the head of the mallet down to size, we're gonna begin working on the handle portion. Now once again, this piece is also rough sawn, so not exactly square, but we'll fix that in just a few moments on the table saw. Now, I'm gonna keep this mostly square as I think that that's gonna fit a little bit better in my hand. I'm gonna round off the edges at the end, but for my sizing for this, I'm gonna go roughly about an inch and a quarter on all sides. Now the length will determine that once we put these two pieces together. That way I could see exactly how that feels in my hand and I'll cut off the excess from there. Using the same method as I used on the mallet head, I set my fence to about an inch and a half. I rip through half, flip it, and rip through the remaining side. Once two sides are square, I set my fence to an inch and a half and finish up my final rips. Now that both my handle and my mallet are cut down to size, I'm going to work on tapering these down. So we're gonna cut down this mallet head, kind of give it just a little bit of an angle so that way when you're striking down, it gives you the perfect degree and flattens out just right. I plan to cut down a slight one degree angle using the miter saw. I begin here by cutting off one end of the mallet head to square up the lumber. I then cut the head down to four inches. As I cut, you will notice the saw sliding back and forth as I make many passes to ease the tension on the blade. I set my saw to one degree and cut two sides of the mallet head so that the end grains are both angled down when looking at the face of the head. Now this handle we're going to taper down using the band saw. That way we can put a mortise and joint right in the top of the head of our mallet and it will slide down and hold just right. My goal here is to shape the handle so that it is more narrow near the bottom. We want the thickest point to be near the top so that way when we slide the handle into the mortise and tenon, the mallet head stays put and doesn't go flying the moment that we take a swing. I cut the two parallel sides down to a slight angle using the bandsaw and lo and behold, I forgot to turn on the camera during this process. My cut turns out pretty rough. My angle is a bit wavy and my blade marks are very apparent. Upon further inspection, 
I decide to take a hand plane to the two angled sides to clean up my work. Once I'm pleased with one side, I flip and begin working on its partnered side. Now that the handle is shaped, I begin working on the mallet head. I mark off center on the top and bottom of my lumber so that I can drill a hole to begin the mortise for the joint. I also trace the smallest end of my mallet handle to use as a template. This will be handy later on when I turn the round drilled out hole into a square mortise. Using a size 22 Forstner bit, I burrow out one side, flip my lumber, and burrow through the other side to make a complete hole through. All right guys, now that we have the hole drilled, we can begin working on our mortise and tenon. So a lot of this is by sight and by feel. We're gonna have to use the handle, line it up, and begin chiseling away to make that opening for this to fit right in. So we'll grab our handle, make sure that you have the right tapered in. You want that to feel right and solid in your hand. And we're gonna look at exactly which way to place this. Now, double check on your mallet head to make sure that you have your tapers going down. So we take the head, we look at the handle, line it up, and then we'll begin work from there. Now, earlier in the video, we made a little square off exactly on where that should be. Now, we're gonna want the widest part of this handle at the top of the mallet and the skinnier part of the handle down at the bottom. That way to ensure when you're swinging that hammer that this head doesn't go flying off. It's gonna slide to that top and should be safe and secure. Another plus to this is that we can swap out handles, we can swap out heads, just in case if there's a damage somewhere. So we're gonna start at this top. I'm gonna to work my way with a chisel and begin angling down. Make sure that you pick out a chisel that works well for you, works well for this size, and we can work from there. Now that I have my main way marked off, I'm gonna work with a smaller chisel to begin taking away some of those layers. So it's important to remember that the two sides of the mallet where you're holding that, those are not tapered. So really, we could go straight down and then just angle those inside pieces. So I'm gonna work from one end, then the other, back and forth to meet in the middle. That way I can make sure that I have that angle just perfect. It's giving me a little bit of issues bouncing around on the table, so I'm gonna move over right here to my vise. Okay, so after working with the chisels, we finally have a rough outline of our handle fitting into our mallet head. Now we're gonna hone that in just a little bit more. That way we could squeeze that in and make a tight fit. We'll look and double check to make sure that we're going in the right direction of our taper. Here I see our lines just faint going down this way, making sure that you have the small end of the handle and sliding it directly in. So we have the start. Let's see if we could get this just a little bit more perfect, that way to slide this handle all the way down. So not too bad fitting that down, but I wanna get a little bit more handle, that way I could have a little bit more leverage with my swing. So I'm gonna begin filing down the edges and see if we get this handle down just a bit more. I'm gonna bring out my file right here. If you'll notice, I am using a round file. Uh, that's just so I could get into those corners just a little bit better. Gonna test that fit. Now you can look and tell around the edges and see exactly where that squeeze is. That's where we'll need to take off just a little excess wood. Gonna pull out my small chisel to shave away just a little bit more than what my file can get to. A 
We're getting a pretty good fit. I think I'm going to go ahead and mallet this head down just a little bit more with my uh, rubber weighted mallet and see if we feel comfortable with, with using this length as our handle. All right, I think that length's right, just perfect. Um, you could see a little bit of gap on where my tenon uh, just, just didn't line up just perfect. Uh, I'm going to be able to clean that up just a little bit more. I'm going to cut off this excess using this flush blade. That way I could get right up to that mallet head and get it just a clean cut. I'm going to slide this right into my vise and that way I can work just a little bit easier. Feels solid, pretty good in the hand. I'm going to go ahead and begin cleaning this up a little bit. I'm going to sand this top just a tiny bit and round these edges. After looking at it a little bit further, I think I'm going to skip the sandpaper and go straight to the plane to try to shave that little excess off that I have from the handle sticking up. Now I do have some imperfections in the wood. Uh, some of that is from termite damage from leaving this lumber outside. Uh, some of it's also a few chips and a, a few splits here and there. Let that lumber and let that grain determine exactly how you're gonna work your wood and try to make your design fit into each piece of lumber. So I'm gonna use some sandpaper. Uh, I might even use an orbital sander and try to sand in some of those indentions and round them off just for the sake of, of not having any snags here and there or some faulty points that could be within the mallet itself. I like for my tools to be nice and clean and not only be a functioning piece, but also be a visual piece as well. Now that we have the general shape that we want for our mallet, we're going to begin finishing the product. But before we start there, I want to talk about a mistake that I made. I'm a big fan of Jonathan Katz Moses. If you don't follow him on YouTube, be sure to go ahead and follow his YouTube channel. I'll be sure to link that below. A big concept that he has is to talk about your mistakes, not to hide them, but to show them and talk about how to fix it. I made a pretty big mistake when making my joint right about here. You see, that looks terrible. It's not square. We have some jagged edges around the sides and ultimately you could see some of the gaps. Now, throughout the structure is pretty solid, but I'm not too happy with the way that looks. Now, full transparency, this was my first uh, large mortise and tenon, and uh, I think that I need just a bit more practice. Overall, not terrible, but definitely something that I wanted to show you. Now, my plan to hide this, uh, just to, to try to cover it up just for my sake so that it looks a little bit better, is to cover it with a small piece of pecan that I cut. I'm gonna basically turn that into a part of the design for the mallet. I'm gonna glue it right on top to cover that. Now, all of this will be finished in Danish oil. I'm gonna go with a, a great natural finish just to cure it just a bit. So I'm gonna work on taking this handle out of the mallet head, and then I'm gonna finish the whole entire thing. Now that we have the two pieces separated, I'm going to go with this Danish oil right here. I decided to go with Watco, a uh, great reputable brand. And I'm going to go ahead and be sure to cover all edges of both this handle and this mallet head. All right, guys, now that I have this completely covered in Danish oil, I'm going to let it dry overnight, and we'll see what it looks like tomorrow. Overall, I'm very pleased with the turnout of this mallet. Uh, that Danish oil just gave it a perfect natural finish. I love the grain of this pecan. I'll get a little bit closer to show that to you. I think it is just gorgeous. Uh, you can see a little bit of where I was talking about the termite damage. Uh, ultimately, I think that's just beautiful. Um, I know that it messes with the structure just a tiny bit, but I think that it's a great little addition. 
I'm even pleased with this little top piece that I added on to hide the mistake in my mallet head. Now this top piece is glued just directly to the handle. That way if this mallet head busts, I can replace it. Or if the handle snaps, I can replace that as well. Uh, overall, I think this was a fantastic project. Feels great in my hand, and I cannot wait to put it to a chisel or another woodworking tool. If you liked this project, be sure to subscribe to my channel for more. Go ahead and ring that bell, like this video, add some comments below, you know the drill. And this was Hamilton Handmade.